What's up guys, Atom Bacon here, welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. In the last episode, we took on the Goldenrod City Gym and our Hoot Hoot evolved into Noctowl. In this episode, we're going to be see- we're going to see if- that girl's gone again. We're gonna see if the- this lady will let us use her flower- her, uh, her flower bottle. Her water bottle now. Oh, you're better than Whitney! You'll be okay then. Here's the squirt bottle. We got the squirt bottle. So now, we can go to the wiggly tree again. Excuse me, kid, can you do a guy a favor? Can you take this Pokemon with mail to my friend? He's on Route 31. Yeah, sure, what the heck. <laughs> you will? Perfect, thanks, kid. I pal's a chubby guy who snoozes all the time. You'll recognize him right away. Well, we have a means of clearing that road out, or clearing the tree out, and as we saw on the map, it connects to Violet City, which is just north of where Route 31 is, or west of Route 31, actually. So we can probably take that Pokemon. You can use that Pokemon in battle, and if you want to, you can just straight up steal that Pokemon, never give it back to him, never do the side quest, and just add that Pokemon to your party. It's, le it's level 20, so it's a respectable level. And... Oh! Oh, it's level 10. Never mind. Yeah, it's a level 10 Spearow. Carrying Flower Mail. I think maybe it got raised to level 20 in the remake? I'm not sure. Okay, never mind. It's a bit more of a struggle if you want to use it. But still, if you don't want to catch a Spearow if it was giving you trouble, there's a free one there if you don't mind the nickname Kenya. <laughs> it's a weird tree. Use the squirt bottle. I'm actually going to wait a moment because I want to put Olive in the lead. Now let's use the squirt bottle. Atom, use the squirt bottle! <laughs> the weird tree doesn't like squirt bottle. Weird tree attacked! And it turns out to be a Pokemon called Pseudo Widow. Don't be fooled by its guise as a, as a tree. This is actually not a grass type Pokemon, it is pure rock type. We have a. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to defeat by this point. If you don't have a grass, water, ground, or fighting type move, I'm. Honestly impressed. Yeah, it's, it's not a difficult foe. I have used it in the past, like I have caught it and trained it. It's not bad. Did you clear that wretched tree? I'm impressed. I want you to have this. TMO8 Rock Smash. So I'm actually not sure if you can't have a fighting type move up to that point, but Rock, Rock Smash is a fighting type move. It does damage, has a chance of lowering defense, and can be used to get rid of. Oof, get rid of trees. Uh, or not trees. Uh, get rid of cracked rocks in the overworld. Despite being used in the overworld, it is not an HM per se. <laughs> On that note, actually, the move Dig has a field use as well. You can use it to get out of dungeons. Huh? What's that? You have mail for me? Let's see. Dark cave leads to another road. That's good to know. Thanks for bringing this to me. My friend's a good guy, and yours well too. I'd like you to have something good in return. I know, I want you to have this. TM50. <laughs> TM50 is nightmare. It's a wicked move that steadily cuts the HP of a sleeping enemy. Ooh, that's scary. I don't want to have bad dreams. Well, that sounds like a perfect move to give to our to give to Noctowl, then. Pilot is trying to learn Nightmare. <coughs> I am going to get rid of Foresight for that. Granted, Foresight would have some uses coming up, but 
Oh well. Well, speaking of Dark Cave, then, how's about we explored a bit? Because we have Mrs. Cutter with us, and she can learn Flash quite easily, so we don't have to give it to one of our actual Pokémon. So let's try exploring this cave a bit. And put up a rappel. Have some cool stuff to explore here. There's not a lot that we can do right now, but. Hmm. Now, if we had Rock Smash. We could move past here, but I don't want to give Rock Smash to any of my Pokemon right now. So, I'm just going to continue on and head toward the next city. Our pals effect wore off. Oh, actually, we should probably go let the guy know that we ran the errand for him, so I'll meet you guys back when we are talking to him. Thanks, kid. You made the delivery for me. Here's something for your troubles. He gives us an HP up. This will increase the base HP of a Pokémon. The increase might not be immediately obvious, but it will come in handy. Alternatively, if you don't want to use this, you can sell it for a decent chunk of money. But if you want any stat boosting items like that, like the vitamins, use them sooner than later. Because once a Pokemon's battled enough, it will no longer be able to use vitamins. Because basically vitamins give you something called effort values. You also get effort values just for fighting, and you can only have a certain amount of effort values, so if you wait too long, you'll already have your effort values maxed out, and you won't be able to take advantage of the vitamins. So sooner than later is better. I will be... Po I probably will use it soonish, but I'm gonna wait just a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> we have the next area to explore. So, what do you say we put a Pileys in the front? Actually, no. I'm gonna leave Olive in the front. Because Olive has Sweet Scent now. So we can show off the full new combo. Use Sweet Scent to lead in. And then, let her rip. Jigglypuff. Level 16. I want to use Sweet Scent. Which has a really nice animation in this game, I like it. And now, switch into a Pileys. And use Hypnosis. I'm not 100% sure if one Sweet Scent guarantees that Hypnosis will connect, but it definitely makes the odds a lot greater. And now, for as long as the foe stays asleep, it will be taking chip damage from Nightmare. As you can see, really good tool for chipping down tanks. Jigglypuff isn't the tankiest thing in the world, but this can be really useful on tougher foes. And the longer they stay asleep for, the more damage you get off on them. Olive grows to level 21. And we're just gonna leave a pile of in. I don't want to waste your time though, so I'm just gonna use Swift, which should be enough to two-shot this thing. 
<laughs> Easy. And yay, Growl failed. put a pilot in the front because a pilot needs the experience the most. Pokemon can't do a thing if they're asleep. I'll show you how scary that is. Wow, that is ironic. <laughs> that is beautifully ironic. <laughs> Drowsy. Well, let's... Let's see just who's gonna show who how scary sleep is. Give him a taste of his own medicine. You like nightmares so much? Eat your own. This is why I love Noctowl. The hypnosis dream eater combination, and having a grass type that can use sweet scent to make it easier to land it can be really good as well. And the nightmare should finish him off. Beautiful. I lost. That's pretty sad. Yeah, you lost your own strategy. I don't know if that. I don't think that drowsy actually comes with hypn with um, nightmare though. I think it just uses hypnosis and then tries to attack you. Oh, Chris. No? No, that's not Chris. Hi, I'm Bill. Who are you? Hmm? Adam. You've come at the right time. I just finished adjustments on my time capsule. You know that Pokemon can be traded, right? My time capsule was developed to enable trades with the past. But you can't send anything that didn't exist in the past. If you did, the PC in the past would have a breakdown. So you have to remove anything that wasn't around in the past. Put simply, no sending new moves or new Pokemon in the time capsule. Don't worry, I'm done with the adjustments. Tomorrow, time capsules will be running in all Pokemon centers. I have to hurry back to Goldenrod and see my folks. Bye bye! <laughs> if you want to go back to Goldenrod, the small house just near the southern underground entrance is his house. If you go back and talk to him, he will actually give you a Pokemon. He'll give you a, a Pokemon called Eevee, which is level 20, and it can evolve into one of five different Pokemon. Um, I actually almost considered using one of its evolutions from my team, but the one I would want to use is dependent on day, on time, and I don't have a lot of control over my t over time in this uh, because of the emulator, and I don't really want an evolution based on it. That said, though, speaking of adding Pokemon to our team, there's a Pokemon here that I want to catch. So I will meet you guys when we find it. It's kind of hard to find, so this might take a while. Wait, I have Sweet Scent. Why am I not using that? Oh! Well, doesn't matter. Here it is. Yes, Miltank. The very Pokemon that Whitney was using. So, I am going to add this beast to my own team as well. Five percent encounter rate. Found it in two tries. <laughs> that was some nice luck. I don't want to risk a critical hit, so I'm just gonna use Peck. And now, while it stays asleep, I should be able to catch it. So a great ball. Perfect. No tank was caught. In order to milk a mill tank, one must have a knack for rhythmically pulling up and down on its udders. Oh, what? I've never read its Pokedex entry. 
me in this game before. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Okay, uh, name, name. I actually... Hmm. Hadn't really put a lot of thought into what name I want to give this, but, um... Eh. Not the most original name in the world, but... I'm gonna go with it. If it fits. Oh, it just fits. Dairy Queen! That's Tackle, Growl, Defense Curl, and Stomp. Huh. And see... <laughs> Pretty good attack, great defense, and surprisingly good speed for how it appears to look. Now, I actually want to check if I think it can learn Rock Smash. I'm hoping it can learn Rock Smash. Yes, it can. Awesome. Dairy Queen can't learn more than four moves. Get rid of... I don't need Growl. And, um, I'm gonna switch Stomp to the top, because it's just generally a lot stronger. It's 65 power versus 35, and has higher accuracy, and can make the foe flinch. And, little known fact, is that if the Pokemon, if a Pokemon uses the move Minimize to raise its defense, Stomp will do double damage to that foe. Now, before I end off this episode, I actually want to show something kind of cool. <laughs> you might have noticed on the sides of the video are two towers. One of them tall, one of them looks like it's been destroyed. <laughs> this is the town that houses those two towers. Known as the Tin Tower and the Brass Tower. But the Brass Tower is now known as the Burn Tower. Destroyed by a mysterious fire and is now deemed unsafe. My name is Eugene. I'm on the trail of a Pokemon named Suicune. And you are? Awesome. Glad to meet you. I heard rumors that Suicune is in this Burn Tower, so I came to look. But where exactly could it be? Beats me. But look who is here. It's Chris. Wait, did I heal? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put Dairy Queen in the front because I want her to get some experience. I don't know if I'm going to stick with that name in the long run. If I think of something better, I'm probably going to change it. Oh, it's you. I came looking for some legendary Pokemon, they say Roost's here, but there's nothing here. Nothing after all the trouble coming to this dump. No way, it's all your fault! Chris wants to battle. Chris sent out Haunter. Go Dairy Queen! Unfortunately, I don't really have a means of dealing with this, so I'm gonna have to switch out. <laughs> And what the heck, I'll let a Pileus take it on. Curse. Oh, that makes my life easier. Curse, um... It works differently depending on whether the Pokemon using it is a ghost type or not. As you saw there, with a ghost type, when it uses it, it cuts half of its HP, and then does a fair chunk of damage at the end of every turn. <laughs> if a non-ghost type uses it, it will increase its attack and defense, but decrease its speed. Now in comes Magnemite. 
Uh, I'm actually gonna send out Mrs. Cutter for a moment here. <laughs> because I want to heal Dairy Queen. I al I already don't like that name. I'm I, I am going to change it, probably in between this episode and the next one. I just need to think of something. That was a crit. Oof! I'm hoping for the defense drops here. <laughs> Yay, defense drop! Sonic Boom is an attack that always does exactly 20 points of damage. I should be able to kill it from this range. It's gotten two defense drops. Very good, very good. And Dairy Queen levels up. There's Zubat. I'm going to stay in... Basically, I want Dairy Queen to get as much experience here as possible. I didn't need to use any of those super potions in the Whitney battle, so I can use them all here. Ah, oh, so close. Yay, dodge the supersonic. Finish it with Tackle. Miltank actually, actually has a really nice back sprint in this game. And in comes Quilava. Big Bad level 22. I think I'm going to switch out and let Crystal fight this. Oof. Oh no! <sighs> uh, do I have anything that heals burns? Wait, I have the ice berry. And a full heal. But I might as well use the ice berry. This is Leer. I should be able to live one. Oh, I outspeed it. Nice. Critical hit. Nice. Chris was defeated. Hm, this is why I hate battling wimps. There's no challenge in it. <laughs> ah, whatever. You would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. <laughs> what are you doing falling into a hole? Some genius you are. Serves you right. I dug a hole here, too. I was shocked. Suicune raced by like a blur, right in front of my eyes. For ten years I chased Suicune, and I finally got to see it. I'm all choked up. Atom, I owe this all to you. Thank you. I heard that the legendary Pokemon of Ecritique tests chosen humans by allowing them to get close. I want to track Suicune. Let's meet again. Farewell. Who's in the lead right now? I'm just gonna put Crystal in front. <laughs> There's some stuff we can get in here. Well, that's blocked by strength. Oh. <laughs> See if 
Oh, I guess we can't really get anything. Hmm. <laughs> oh well. I think there is something you can get up here if you have Rock Smash. Ooh, Raticate. That's a tougher foe. Hyper Fang. Ooh, that did a lot. That, that That's a powerful move sometimes. It's... If you want to try using a Rattata, Hyper Fang's the main move that you kind of have to look forward to. Because it can do quite a bit of damage in the right situations. I'm gonna heal up. And with that, Sandshrew is evolving. Our team's getting quite a bit stronger, very quickly. Octal got its main combo, Sand Slash is evolving, and we got a new Pokemon. Er, yeah. And we can use Rock Smash to break this. Get this item. As another HP up. Now, Miltank... F its main thing is that it has a lot of health. So I wanted to save these HP ups for when we got that. And I actually forgot that there was a second one here. So I'm going to go ahead and use both of these. It might not see seem like big increases now, but it will have a bigger impact later down the road. I guess now we can show off how you can use Dig to get out of a cave. <laughs> this guy wasn't here before. In the distance past, this tower burned in a fire. Three nameless Pokemon perished in it. A rainbow-colored Pokemon descended from the sky and resurrected them. It's a legend that has been passed down through Ecotique's gym leaders. Me? I was a trainer way back then. Oh ho ho. Speaking of gym leaders, I think we are going to go and check that out soon. But, explore around a little bit more. What's this place? A critique dance theater. Well, this is interesting. This seems like a good place to explore around a bit more in the next episode. <laughs> in this episode, we managed to get a new Pokemon, got to a new town, had another evolution, and got our main move on our one of our other Pokemon. So we had quite a bit of growth in this episode. And in the next episode, we're going to see if we can do anything with these dancers, and then we're going to challenge the gym. See you guys next time. In the last episode, we took on the Goldenrod City Gym and our Hoot Hoot evolved into Noctowl. Ow, fucker. Stupid fly, goddammit. Alright, take three. A fucking fly just flew right in front of my face and made me... I flinched and hit my head on the back wall. The wall right behind my couch, so if I lean too far back too quickly, I whack the back of my head on and the fly made me flinch. <laughs>